Just give us your initial assessment of this partial deal. Well, it's a first step. And we hope mm. that there are many more steps that make it into a real agreement. I think that the fact that uh, there's been a suspension of the tariffs on October 15th is a good step. The fact that uh, China is going to open up its financial market, it already decided to do so, is a good step. And so it isn't really a deal yet. It's just a first step toward a deal. Mm. Uh, we were already talking, or President Trump is already talking about phase two of this, which he says may include issues like industrial policy. And I guess there's some speculation that maybe state subsidies and even the issue of Huawei may be discussed as part of that phase two deal. How much of a challenge do you think that part of these negotiations will? And is it even conceivable that China will really make concessions on some of these core issues? My own view is that we should have sat down in a diplomatic fashion and work through the economic issues along with the political issues on both sides of the table. My own view is that this is a magic moment for both sides when the economies are slowing. You know, China has decided on its own for good reason to move from a uh, industrialized investment economy into a supply side consumer economy. And yet, it's, it's state-owned enterprises are, are, are vibrant, and yet they are generating three times the loss, 300 percent more loss than they did in 2008. And 40 percent of the state-owned enterprises are losing money. So this is a good ch a chance to be able to move more to the market in China's own interest. Carlo, we haven't seen this new grand bargain that Trump had promised uh, after he was elected. In fact, what we have here, the beginning of some sort of deal potentially here, is actually worse off than what we saw uh, back in May. Uh, so do you think this was all worth it on the U.S. side? Well, I believe the two largest economies simply must work together. We will be competitive, as we are with many nations, both of us, and we, w we should be cooperative. And I see the future as much, much brighter if we can join hands and deal with the issues that uh, will s serve both of us well. I mentioned the uh, opening up, or the, uh, I call it competitive neutrality for, with respect to state-owned enterprises. Don't give them something that you wouldn't do for a private company. And uh, I think that would really generate growth in the Chinese economy. And we need to work on ways that China can move in the direction that is in his, their interest, but also preserves our international system that has for 70 years guaranteed prosperity, growth, stability, and peace for global economies. Yeah, and, and Carla, as far as, I guess, finding those common areas of interest or, or where incentives are aligned, as we try to sort of figure out what might be included in phase two or phase three, where do you think those areas of compromise perhaps are between the two economies? Well, they've outlined things that they need to have done, an enforcement mechanism. And an enforcement mechanism is a good idea on both sides because it builds trust. If you know that uh, you, you and I have an arrangement, but if you step out of line, I have a mechanism to, uh, uh, to get the problem resolved, uh, we're more likely to make another arrangement, another deal. And uh, so I think there are many things. Protection of intellectual property is something that will probably come in step two. But China got more patents I believe, than any other nation last year. And those pat mm. patent holders and their licensees need to be protected. And so it's in their interest to have strong and reliable intellectual property laws. I can go through the list and say that the things that will make China a vibrant market economy today are things that are in its interest and will get applause around the world.